So I wanted to make a quick video and quickly do a demo on the masking feature within Lightroom. Uh, they have had some substantial updates to this feature here within the past year that have completely changed the game. It's really incredible. Uh, for a lot of you, it won't seem that incredible because you don't know what it was like to edit without these features, but either way, it's amazing and it really changes all the possibilities that we have with editing. So I wanted to just kind of give you a quick demo. This is a shoot that I did recently for a local musician. Um, and this, this photo is finished, but just as a, you know, front end tip here, let's say, you know, with all of my sliders here that I have from my white balance and all of these, you know, uh, adjustments that I've made, if I, if I like these, then I can simply just do command C and it gives me this prompt here to copy these settings. Then I'll go back to the gallery here and let's just go down to one I haven't done yet. Let's take this one here or one where their eyes are open. There we go. So the first thing I would do with this one is I'm going to crop it. Uh, basically just so I can rotate it to align my horizon line here so that everything's balanced. I'll start right there, then I'll command V or control V on Mac to paste those settings in that I just had and do a slight exposure adjustment here to get everybody in a certain area. So I lit this shot in case you can't tell, but I was one light short for what I really needed. So you're going to see a dramatic fall off in lighting over here on this side. These guys are fine. These need some help. But the beauty of that is with this new masking feature that I'm about to show you, it's not difficult at all to adjust that. So let's say I'm good with everything here. I'm going to go into the masking module here and click on that. And then... I want to select people. So now it'll automatically find people. It's insane how this works now. But uh, here, my friend Chuck and my friend Jared, they're a little dark. So I'm going to select Chuck and I can pick specific features if I wanted, but I just want the entire person here. So I'm gonna create a mask for that. As you can see, the mask is created. It has this red here to show me where the mask is. And literally, I'm just going to pull up the exposure for him slightly until he kind of balances just like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing for Jared there on the end. So I'm going to hit the plus sign here. Go to select people and find Jared. There he is. Make a selection for the entire person there. And the same thing, just bring up the exposure a little bit until everyone's kind of balanced here. Now, this is the part that I want to show you. This first mask that I have of Chuck, I can see there's a little glow here. So this is, you know, the professional in me wanting to go back and fine tune this. So if I select that mask, then it gives me the option for minus. And if I hit the minus, so I'm going to subtract from that mask and I'm going to select a brush. I'm going to command plus sign to zoom in get in even closer and you can see this glow right here and here that's coming through off that automatic mask but that's still crazy close and accurate so basically I just have my brush here you can use the brackets or even two finger drag if you have a MacBook or a touch trackpad like I'm using right now um, and I'm just going to use this minus brush and get just kind of gently work this edge to get rid of that, that kind of halo effect that was happening there. I'm sure you can see it kind of disappearing as I work this edge. And this looks so much better. And so obviously a minor detail, but the more you work in photography, the more you understand that these minor details make a world of difference in your edits. Um, while I'm zoomed in, let me just check on Jared over here. His is a little cleaner, but he's still got a little halo effect. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select his mask, go to minus, 
get the brush again and just work this edge along the hair where the hair meets the sky and all that. So I'm sure you can kind of see what that's doing. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time doing this because I don't want the whole video to be about that. But I wanted to show you, you can go back and adjust the mask once you've, even if it sets automatically like this. So now if I zoom back out, they're nice and tidy. Everybody's got a nice balanced exposure on them. Uh, I'm just going to show you several other th things that we can do to mask this. So let's say uh, I want that sky to be even more dramatic than it is. Hit this plus sign, select sky. And so it has now made that selection. There's a little bit of overlap on these guys here, but that's fine. But for the time being, I'm going to go down here and the temperature, maybe make it a little more blue. I can change the tint to whatever I want back there, but I don't like things to be too radical. But for the sake of doing it, let's do this. Let's just make a dream sky like that. You can see this mask here on Jared, or the this part between his legs here of the sky didn't go to the with that mask for the sky. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit a plus sign to add to this. I'm gonna use the brush again as a additive brush. I'm gonna zoom in, come down here. I'm just gonna paint this area in by hand to get that same sky effect happening. I don't want to get too far onto the pants um, because that will actually, you know, change the, the tint of the pants and all that. Um, also want to point out that I'm using a feathered brush. So when you go to the brush here, I have a hundred percent feather on it, which means it has a kind of a gradient, uh, gradient off the edge as far as its intensity. So I can, I can kind of push that feathered edge into a hard line like this out of the pants. And as long as I don't go too far with it, you don't really see that. So just doing this kind of quickly so that I don't spend too much time and bore you to death on one particular thing. Cause the idea here is to show you plenty of things. Um, all right. So I have that brushed in. Now the other thing about this mask that I just put on the sky is that it is overlapping onto their faces. So let's go the same mask, you know, the sky here, you can see where it's kind of overlapping their faces. I'm going to do subtract with the brush and just zoom in a bit. I'm going to do this relatively quickly and take that off of, you can see this is like, that select sky feature was all over their face. As you can see there, I just kind of erased that off. Same here. I can make this a little bigger, covering a relatively large area. Same here. I'm sure you can see what that's doing. It's pretty drastic. Okay, and there, I just got a little sloppy with it, and that's okay. Because that gives me the opportunity to show you. If I hold the option button, it can flip to the other. So I need to add this mask back right here, just along the ear, see? And then when I let go of option or alt on a um, PC, I can go back to the original brush that I set to use. So let's back out just a little bit. Bring this over here. Let's get this off of their faces too. Good, and there. So, now I've adjusted the sky. I've adjusted the brightness on various people just with these masks. I can go back in and adjust these at any point I want. Um, something I like to do, if I add a new mask here, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna add a linear gradient. I'm going to bring this up just in the foreground here. And just because I shot this at ground level, I've got a lot of texture working there. Um, 
and and a uh, kind of worms I viewed as they call it. So I want to I want to pop some of this texture on this asphalt there just by using that gradient there. Just pulled up texture, maybe a little clarity, which is compression. Give it a little pop there. But yeah, that. And so I, as I look at this, I still feel like Jared is a little dark. So I'm going to choose his mask. And go up here. I'm just gonna pull up some shadows off of him rather than the full-on exposure. And let's do the same thing to Chuck, but not quite as substantial. There we go. And so that's a nice balanced look there. And I just wanted to show you that uh, just ways that you can use the masking feature within Lightroom to create some very specific edits and really radically transform your entire image if you so choose. All right, hope this is helpful for you guys, and thanks for watching.